little prep. Did it come? Did you say clap? Here it is. A little preparation. Preparation for preparing for the actual clap. Here it is. Tom, watch this. What happens if I take this and add one of these? What is the result of that? Well, what is this thing right here? Chlorine. That's chlorine. Yeah, we'll get a periodic table for you. I don't know that that'll help too much on this specific one, but we'll be using them. So grab one and pass them down. All right, take one, pass them around. Oops, there you go. There you go. Okay. So what do you think is going to happen if I do this, gentle people? Chlorine will be noble. Okay, but what do I write over here? Where's E? Chlorine uh, okay. minus. Okay. What is this? That's right, Tim. That's right. C L with a minus sign. Couch buddies, do you understand why that makes sense? Yeah. Yeah. So just if I take a chlorine, what? Is this a chlorine uh, molecule? Is this a chlorine atom? atom? It's an atom. I call it an atom because it's what's on the periodic table, right? I take a chlorine atom and add an, what is this little e electron. electron? Electron. See that, Tom? This E minus is electron. Oh, it's a minus electron. What, what, what would it be if you put E plus? Well, now we call it a positron, but they call it P plus. So, no, actually, you're right. It's, we call it, it's e, minus, e, e plus, but it's called a positron. But we're not going to get into that. And so that would be. Uh, now, so. The question I want to ask really quickly, how many protons does CL have? 17. 17? Yes. Does everybody agree? How many electrons does this species have here? 17. 17. How many electrons is this thing right here? One. So how many electrons does this have? That has 18. 18 electrons. How many protons does this have? 17. 17, and that's why you have to write CL with a minus charge, correct? Yes. Does that make sense? So, this I call a chlorine what? Atom. And this is now a what? Ion. Chlorine ion. A chlorine ion. All right, so here's another chemical reaction that I want to have, have you answer some questions about. Here it is, okay? <laughs> That's right. Here it is, gentle people. Salt! Sodium chloride. All right, so I have a sodium salt. what? Table salt. Salt! What sodium is this here? Atom. 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 Sodium atom. atom. How many protons and how many electrons? Eleven. Eleven and eleven. Eleven protons, eleven electrons. This 17. one here? Yeah, 17. Seventeen. Seventeen protons, seventeen <laughs> electrons. Okay? And together. Okay, let's, let's put them over here. So, Emma, do you want one of these? Now, what has gone on for them to come together? What happened here? They, well, one needs to lose, one needs to gain. So, they picked up also. So, that means that that, that means that sodium would be positive and chlorine would be negative. Okay. And they Couch buddies, how do we know... Time to use your ears extra hard on this one. This is an important question. How do we know that when sodium combines with chlorine to form this thing, there's no charges on this thing now? Why didn't I draw any charges on this thing? Because they still have the same charge. Okay. Because combined, the charges cancel out, right? So there's supposed to be charges on the left side? No, because they're atoms at first. They do some magic, and that's what this arrow means. And we know what the magic is, though, right? Yeah, they mix. They I just told you the story. It's rubbish, right? They transfer an electron. They transfer an electron, and then, right? And now so, they have a plus how, minus buddy, so how do we know that sodium gave up the electron, Tom? How do you know? It was a metal. That's it. Perfect answer. If it's a metal, we know that metals form compounds by doing what? Losing. Losing electrons. And nonmetals form compounds by gaining or by what? Sharing. Sharing. Nonmetals can form compounds by sharing. Can metals share? Metals don't share. I mean, 
not in the way that we're describing. Okay. Metals are made while they don't share. Very good. Now we have the ability to introduce a new kind of chemical reaction. A chemical reaction between two ionic compounds. Now I already showed you one of these a while back, but you might not have realized that that's what you were seeing. So let me write it down for us. And I'm going to use two colors to remind you about one of these compounds. Okay. They never want to share, but they always lose. Do you remember this reaction? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Do you? Metal. That's right, sir. We have metals in both of them, don't we? Isn't it explosive? Is this explosive? What is this element there? Copper sulfate. Copper sulfate. So this is a compound, copper sulfate. Is this an ionic compound or a molecular no. compound? No, it's an ionic. How do you know? No. It has no negative or positive charges. But if it, it has negative or positive charges, that's not even a compound. That's called a what? Ion. An ion. I think it's an ionic right? compound because it has a metal and not metal. If yeah. it has a metal, it's got to be an ionic oh. compound. Ionic compound. So this is an ionic compound. How about this one here? It's ionic. It's ionic, it's ionic as well. Very good. Two ionic compounds. Does anybody remember this one when I showed it to you guys? Well, yeah, it creates copper. I think it's oh, yeah, it creates like copper, copper nitrate. Copper. Keep looking right here. You should be able to kind of figure it out. You can kind of stare at it. Copper. Is there nitrates in here somewhere? Are there phosphates? It's copper it's carbonate. Carbonate. Here's the carbonate, right? It's CO3. copper carbonate and sodium sulfate. That's right. That's right. Now, how did he know that? What happens when we mix two ionic compounds? Uh, they, they split they apart. They split apart initially, and then they swap, the other. They swap. They swap partners, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay? Why do they swap partners even if... Well, well they only do that, remember, if, if it's, it's, it's more uh, stable. The new forming compound is but more But isn't stable. it just as stable if you just... Lose with um, that's not no, that stable. no, that's not. Uh, if I have copper sulfate here, <clears throat> there's a degree of stability or gain when copper gives up two electrons to this group of polyatomic ion here. Wait, and same thing with sodium carbonate. Okay, copper is in the the, the, the blue transition zone, which requires more, much more um, in-depth understanding of how electrons are arranged to understand why it does what it does. But that's so because we'll talk about that for um, now. usually metals metals, metals are Where happy losing just two. And that's right. Often, almost ninety nine percent of the time, a metal will generally like to lose at least two. Minimum? Maximum two or no minimum? Oh, but some um, there are a few exceptions, but wait, like know, sodium. Why did you lose? copper lose a lot more? Yeah, that's 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 an in depth question, and we're not going to be able to get to that question for a while. Maybe we want to go that direction. That's, that's an option. Here we go. Copper sulfate sodium carbonate. You can predict what the products of this reaction will be, couch lovers. What do you think? What is this? What did we, what did we call this? Did you guys hear? This is a metal. It's called copper. And this is this polyatomic ion called sulfate. And this is what metal? Can you guys see that one on the periodic table? Sodium, sodium. Sodium, very good. And this is? Sodium. What is this here? Anybody remember that thing? Help out over there, guys. Oh, co 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 sodium carbonate. carbonate. Just this part right here is the oh, carbonate. Oh, carbonate. Carbonate. Very good. It's carbonate. Okay, so. I can predict what the products will be because just, copper here their, uh, is going to go with the carbonate. And what else is going to happen? The sodium. The sodium. Go, they, 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 they dumped each metals. other. They dumped their friends and they went on a date. They don't the jump. Ones. They just mutually agree. <laughs> okay? They so, swapped their lava. You can see how when you mix they two ionic compounds, the result is uh, the swap, right? Yeah. Tim. 
I'll swap the girls. Now, do you guys remember what happened with this one, copper carbonate? It didn't dissolve. It wasn't soluble. It wasn't soluble. Oh, yeah. So we put a little S there. How do you make an S upside down like this? Put an S there. These ones were aqueous. They dissolved in water. All of these were aqueous initially, initially right? Wait, NH2CO3, is it that? Don't they always want to be aqueous? Well, that depends on solubility. Remember, we sang a whole song about solubility already, right? And we said that some things are soluble. How do we know if some things are soluble? What was the number one rule? If, it if there's a metal. Well, yeah, but I mean, how can we look at a compound? If, and if, if there's Na, it always dissolves. If it, if it has Na, it was always dissolved. If it has the first group, it always dissolves. First group, it always dissolves. If it has seventh group, it always dissolves, except a few That's other things. That's perfect. And that contain, or takes care of a lot of scenarios. And then there's a few different things that if it contains like that. Like nitrates. Is. Yeah, neon. Okay. Neon. 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 So then I'm going to show a chemical right. reaction and you're going to show me the product. Tell me the products, okay? okay? I'm going to tell you a chemical reaction and you're going to tell me the product. So if I take this and mix it with, mm -hmm. I'll use a different color here, okay? Okay. Super cheap. Are you on the very edge of that couch? That couch, you can kind of see what he's doing. I know, which is why I love one of them. Let me look at the periodic table real quick here. Yeah. All right, so here it is. Whoops, I forgot. Look at Oreo, guys. Tell me. In fact, what I want you to do first is talk to your neighbors. Find out what the products for these reactions will be. Talk to your neighbors. Find, find a neighbor. Find a neighbor. Hurry. Find, find a neighbor. 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 Find a Right there, nitrogen oxide. Mm -hmm. That is called the nitrate ion. The nit or sorry, polyatomic ion. The nitrate ion. And then bromine. Not A and G. Could you put aqueous? SR is not on the periodic table. I saw G. Wait, let me yeah, it is. So it's in the oh, I found it. I found it. Section. 38. Oh, 38. All right. Good hunting. Strontonium. Okay. All right. So, we're on the same line. do you guys know the name we're of this the compound? Line. Silver oh. nitrate. Silver nitrate. See that oh. couch lovers? What do we got here? What is this thing? Tom, <laughs> did you see that? Oh, I can't read it. I'm not. Ag. What number is ag, guys? Silver. Forty-seven. Forty. 40. No. Strontium. Four. Ag. What? Seventy. Forty-seven. 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 Ag is forty-seven. Yeah. What's it saying on it, Tom? Do you know how to read the name of it? Wait, which one? Silver. 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 Very good. And Silver. S R. S R. Strontium. Strontium. Can you guys find the word there? Yeah, yeah. All right. The one's bromine. Bromine. So this is strontium bromide, and this is silver. Nitrate. Nitrate. I found that. What will the products be for this reaction, guys? Silver bromide and. Strontium and nitrate. Silver bromide. And strontium nitrate. And strontium nitrate. nitrate. So because that, that one's going to explode. I can that tell. Here so are the products. I'm going to draw them, okay? Silver bromide. And what? Strontium nitrate. Strontium nitrate. Before the reaction. <laughs> what? Before reaction. I don't know. What time is it? Are we done? Um, no. yeah, one more minute. Before the reaction, silver nitrate, that's soluble, but now it's strontium that's soluble. Ooh, wait. One okay. more minute. All right, so let's look at solubility. Do we know that this one's soluble? Strontium bromide, is that soluble? It's soluble. How do you know? Because it has, because it has column 7 and doesn't have any... Did you get that floor levers? People who are on the floor. And does it have this is soluble. We can tell it's soluble because Br 
is in the seventh, in the seventh column. column. And this one we can tell is soluble because it has nitrate. Mom, where are you going? It has nitrate. Oh. So both of these are aqueous. Aqueous. A Q. Aqueous. Now, after these come together, which one is soluble? Are they both soluble? SRNO3. No. This one's soluble, and this that one. That looks not soluble because usually in column seven, unless it has a G, then uh, I forgot yeah. the other. Silver, stuff. mercury, S or lead. S Remember those. S starts in the second column. So like, this ends up being what? Solid. S starts in the second column. No, that's sol. No, that's soluble. How do you know? Because it has. Yeah, oh, but oh, 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 that's right. It usually is soluble, but it I was sense. looking at rubidium because rubidium. All right, gentle people, thanks for coming. We'll see you tomorrow. Usually, silver is not soluble. Wait, <laughs> 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 <laughs>